viewers i am dr nilima chopra and today session is about how as a teacher we can facilitate learning in a multi level or a heterogeneous classroom well you are familiar that in a classroom there are different kinds of students each student is different and unique there might be some students in your classroom which take less time to learn a topic or a subject while there are other students which take more time to learn the same topic or the subject one student might have high learning achievement while the others might have low learning achievement therefore we say that each student has a different pace of learning and a different level of learning achievement students in a classroom therefore differ from each other in respect to their learning needs their learning capacity the interests their attitudes and motivation and so on and so forth therefore this classroom in which we find different kind of students with different abilities and at different levels of proficiency is called a multi level classroom the presence of different ability level students like the high average and low in a class refers to a multi level situation or a multi level classroom now multi level classrooms or multi level situation is found in almost all classrooms it is present both in mono grade situation and a multi grade situation in a mono grade classroom where one teacher is teaching children of a single class at a time we find that students are there with different subject learning abilities students with different competencies students with different attitudes and interests etc for example if there are 30 to 40 students in a class they can be divided into at least three groups or levels based on their learning ability in the first group you can put the fast learners or the uh, fast learners of the classroom in the second group you can put the average students of the classroom while the third group can consist of the slow students or students who take a little more time to understand a concept students of the first group acquire learning competencies more quickly than the students of the third group and these students will always progress faster such a class can be considered as a combination of three different smaller classrooms in other words in each mono grad classroom there is presence of a multi level situation in a multi grade classroom when the teacher is required to teach children of two or more classes simultaneously for example the same teacher is teaching grade 1 2 and 3 together in one classroom that is a multi grade classroom in such a situation also you will find that teacher has to deal with a multi level situation there are various issues related with a multi level situation although there are students with three different abilities in a classroom high average and low but the teacher has to plan his or her lesson plans keeping the average student in consideration now what happens if this is done the high achievers or the fast learners in the classroom they will complete their task quickly before the scheduled time is over and they will wait for the further instructions from the teachers they might even cause disturbance in the class in this time for the slow learners it is a different scenario they might want the teacher to give them more time they will not be able to finish the given task or the activity in the prescribed time therefore it becomes evident in this case that the teacher has neither planned any extra learning activities for the higher achievers nor has the teacher put in some extra time for the slow students the teacher also did not plan for time management in this situation therefore it is very important for the teacher to understand many critical issues of a multi level situation in order to manage the learning of the students effectively now what are these issues and how can we deal with them let us find out or discuss some of the strategies that we can use in a multi level situation the strategies that a teacher can use in a multi level situation are she can conduct a thorough assessment of students learning levels she can plan the lessons accordingly she can use project based learning or thematic instruction in her classroom use of cooperative learning or peer learning is also essential appropriately using the teaching learning material available in the class is also very important and the final is how to group the students or the grouping strategies we will discuss each one of them in detail 
Now, as we know, each student is different in the classroom and each student has different needs. The teacher has to be very familiar with the different needs and the educational requirements of each and every student in her classroom. Therefore, she needs to assess every student. This also includes what is their background, do they have a different native language, do they belong to different cultural groups, any socio-economic strata and so on and so forth. The teacher also needs to know the learning styles of the students. Some students learn more through the visual senses, some students learn through more audio activities, while some students learn by reading and writing. There is another set of group of students which learns more kinesthetically or by doing activities. So the teacher needs to know what kind of students are present in her classroom. She also needs to know the achievement levels of the students, the general achievement level of the student and in specific subjects. There are students who might be weak in certain subjects or students who are uh, particularly strong in certain subjects. The teacher has to be aware of all this. She also needs to know if there is any student who has a special educational requirement or special educational need. Based on the assessment of the students, we can use the second strategy which is planning the lesson ap appropriately. Now once the teacher has assessed the students, she needs to divide the class into maybe two groups or three groups. If she is dividing the class into two groups, they can be into lower level or higher level of students. Or if there are three groups in the classroom, basic, intermediary and advanced learners. Then she needs to make the lessons, lesson plans for the entire class. Now this lesson plan can be planned according to a central theme or a topic of the curriculum. Once she has made the lesson plan, she needs to identify different objectives for different levels of students in the classroom. Therefore, developing two or three parallel objectives for your lesson plans is an important aspect of a multi-level classroom. Now let us consider an example. The teacher is teaching the topic of animal habitats and their adaptive features in the classroom. She needs to divide the students into two groups on the basis of their ability and proficiency level. The group 1 can be the basic level of students or the lower level of students and group 2 is the advanced or the higher level of students. Now she needs to plan two different sets of objectives for these groups. For the first group, the students can be asked to identify three or four different animals, match them with their habitats and identify one main adaptive feature of each animal. While for the group 2, which is the advanced group, the teacher can ask or plan to identify habitats and adaptive features of 7 to 8 different kinds of animals. The students will then be required to relate the adaptive features of these animals with conditions of the habitat that they live in. So you see how we can plan two different ob objectives for the same classroom depending on the group level. In the slide shown on your screen, we can see how the teacher can manage the classroom for doing this particular activity. The concept can be explained to the whole class together. She can talk about the habitats of the animals and the adaptive features. Then after dividing the class into two groups, the group one can have a more teacher directed activity because these children need more attention from the teacher. Then after explaining the concept thoroughly, she can give an assignment or a worksheet wherein the students will be required to match the animals with the pictures, to write the names of the animals, to write one adaptive feature of the animals that is being discussed in the classroom. The group too can in the meantime be involved in more group work. After the discussions happen in the group uh, work in the group two, the teacher can take feedback from the students and then can ask the students to write features of habitat and adaptive features of different animals. Then in the end, the teacher again summarizes the concepts by bringing the whole class together and she discusses the key points in the whole class together. Therefore, we see that there are different aspects to lesson planning in a multi-level classroom. The teacher always begins the lesson with the whole class together. 
she can then give different tasks to different students from different levels the tasks can be given according to the variety of groupings in the classroom it is very important that the teacher monitors all groups and gives her feedback and at the end of the lesson she can summarize the concept to the whole class together now let's discuss another strategy that we can use in a multi level classroom use of project based learning and thematic instruction can be very helpful in a multi level situation the projects can be organized around themes such as animals seasons food groups colors transport and so on the students can work in groups based on their interests or their ability or proficiency levels now when the teacher makes use of this approach it is known as thematic instruction and this can be very helpful in unifying a multi level class the next strategy that we can talk about in a multi level classroom is use of cooperative learning or peer learning when designing the project based learning activities and when grouping students in the classroom teachers can draw on cooperative learning approaches now this is very helpful because students are encouraged to discuss in small groups they learn from each other and often pairing of students that is pairing of an advanced learner with a slow learner or a student with le lesser ability or proficiency is very helpful in a classroom now we can discuss a few games or activities which can encourage cooperative learning in a classroom for example buddy reading this is an activity which is very good for encouraging reading and writing among students in this we pair the students of the class and one student in each pair does the reading the buddy or the help or uh, the the friend helps the uh, the other student to make sure that the student is reading properly is pronouncing all the words correctly and so on and so forth the students can also ask each other question after the reading is over to understand about their comprehension the same thing can be done with peer editing because peer editing allows students to look at each other's work and make corrections and comments at their own levels another game which is very useful is name the thing now name the thing game requires picture cards there are two picture cards for each items for example you can have two picture cards of cars of computers of a toothbrush and so on now one set of the cards are displayed on the table the other set is of the cards is with one of the students the student gives clues or gives references for the picture that he or she is holding and the other students have to guess this particular thing or the object that the student is giving clues on the other students are also encouraged to ask questions to narrow down their choices and to pick the correct matching picture so all these activities can encourage the students to share to discuss and make use of the peer learning concept the next strategy that we are going to discuss related to the multi level classroom is using appropriate teaching learning materials now the use of appropriate tlms helps the teacher in effective management of teaching learning in a multi level situation it keeps all students meaningfully involved and engaged it also helps the students to understand difficult concepts because it is providing concrete experiences to the students it attracts students attention towards the lesson it facilitates the group learning and self learning and it also helps in stimulating discussions amongst groups now what kind of tlms should be used by the teacher generally the tlms should be open ended material open ended means the students can use them for different activities and once the students use these same materials for different activities it encourages a lot of discussion there should also be a variety of material available in the classroom which support independent study which encourages self directed learning and these tlms should encourage that the students learn on their own and they should be less teacher centered more interactive and facilitate independent learning the kind of tlms used in multi level teachings are dice picture cards flash cards we can use letter cards number cards story cards posters leaflets 
story books, dictionaries, models, charts and so on and so forth. Apart from these, worksheets can also be prepared by the teacher which can be used in a class which has a multi-level situation. Now let us look at the next strategy which is very useful in the management of a multi-level situation which is grouping strategies. Now grouping strategies are, there are different ways of grouping students in a classroom. You can group the students into pairs where two students are working together. You can group the students into uh, groups of 3 to 10 students. They can also be teamwork where there are different teams of students which are working together in competition with other teams. While you can also conduct classes, uh, the activities in a whole class situation. Now it is very important for the teacher to understand when she has to use a whole group situation, when she has to conduct small group activities, when she needs to pair students together and when individual work is appropriate. She also needs to understand or determine when it is best to place learners in either heterogeneous groups or homogeneous groups. Heterogeneous groups are groups where learners with different sets of skills or varying ages or different cultural groups are grouped together. Now homogeneous groups are groups where learners with similar skills, similar ages or from similar cultural groups are grouped together. Homogeneous groups of students organizes the students by their ability levels. In a homogeneous group, all students perform at roughly the same instructional level. In a heterogeneous group, there is mixing of students so that the students of all levels are represented in each group. Heterogeneous groups therefore include students from a wide range of instructional level. Now we have found that grouping the students in a heterogeneous group is quite useful in a multi-level situation. Now let us see what are the advantages of this. We have seen that heterogeneous grouping of students is quite useful because the heterogeneous groups may include one student that is high achieving, two students that achieve at an average level or one student that is low achieving. The idea is that each student benefits from having the other student in the group and there are various benefits of grouping the students in a heterogeneous group in the multi-level situation. Let us look at some of these advantages. The students of less ability are not labelled or stigmatised when they are put in a heterogeneous group. But when you make a homogeneous group of low ability students, then the whole class knows that these students are the low performing students and therefore they can be labelled or stigmatised. Putting them in a heterogeneous group helps to overcome this particular situation. The students are challenged and motivated to perform well when they are in a heterogeneous group. A heterogeneous group also gives advanced students a chance to help and mentor their classmates and friends. It definitely increases a lot of interaction and encourages discussion among all students. However, there are certain disadvantages also of grouping the students in a heterogeneous group. Homogeneous groups generally have been found easier to manage and therefore teachers prefer to group the students in homogeneous groups. It has also been observed that parents of advanced students might want their students to be part of an advanced group rather than an heterogeneous group. Advanced students in a heterogeneous group may also feel forced into a leadership role that they do not want to perform. So it puts a lot of pressure on the advanced students also being in a heterogeneous group. Also the advanced students might feel that they are not learning new concepts at their own speed. They might feel that they have to slow down to assist the other students or they might have to curtail their own study to proceed at a rate of the entire class. Students of lesser abilities may also fall behind in a heterogeneous group and end up being criticized for slowing the rate of the whole group or the whole class. Also it has been observed that unmotivated or academically challenged students may be ignored rather than assisted by their peers. So there are various disadvantages of grouping the classroom into a heterogeneous group. 
However, the teacher needs to understand that heterogeneous grouping is very useful in a multi-level situation. And she needs to use certain strategies to work effectively with heterogeneous groups. Now, what are these strategies? Let us discuss. Teachers need to remain aware and recognize when a heterogeneous grouping is not functioning properly for a student. Teachers also should support advanced students by supplying additional academic challenges and by helping students who fall behind get the assistance they need to catch up. Students can work together on a variety of tasks, including reading to each other, working with cooperative learning structures or group projects, as well as working independently. Now, group work is highly recommended and well-documented instructional strategy to manage heterogeneous groups in a classroom. And engaging students in group work helps in, a, in producing an effective learning environment in the classroom. But to engage the children effectively in a group work, the teacher needs to plan many things. She needs to plan how to organize a classroom. She has to prepare the students for group work. She has to ensure that there is equal participation among all students. She also has to design different learning tasks that support conceptual understanding, mastery of content and language development among all students and in different levels of the students. Also, it is very important for the teacher to assess students on the group work as well as the individual student's contribution in the group work. So, if she plans for all these activities, she can ensure that the group work that she is doing in the classroom can bring about effective teaching learning environment in her classroom. Also, in her group work, the teacher can incorporate a number of cooperative learning activities like the ones we discussed earlier. She can design group work or according to different abilities of the students and she can make use of the strengths of the students in that particular group. It is very important that the teacher delegates authority to the students, allowing them to be responsible for their own and others learning in the cooperative group. And definitely, the children have to be encouraged to help each other. Also, it becomes very helpful if the teacher discusses the norms of working in groups before start of the activity. So, she should decide she, and discuss the norms and the rules to be followed when the group work is being conducted by the children. It is very important that the teacher gives feedback during and after the activities of the group work. This feedback is very helpful for the student's learning. Also, acknowledging the contribution of students with lower ability is very important for enhancing the motivation and the morale of the students with lower ability. Now, the teacher also needs to provide individual attention wherever it is required, whether it is required by low ability students or students with advanced ability. And she needs to encourage social interactions and discussions amongst the students of her classroom. Assessment also forms a very important aspect of group work and heterogeneous groups. Students should know in advance what is the criteria for their assessment. So the teacher needs to discuss what are the various ways in which she will assess them and what, are, what is she exactly looking for, what is the criteria for her assessing the particular activity that the students are doing. Also, the teacher needs to measure both content, the key ideas, the application of the idea. She also needs to look at the process while they were conducting the group work in the heterogeneous group. For example, were they able to use different uh, uh, personal experiences? Did they uh, use a variety of perspectives? Did they use multi-ability skills and inter- and intrapersonal skills while achieving the objective of the group activity? And as previously mentioned, these assessments need to be done individually as well as for the group. Another very important aspect of multi-level classroom is use of multiple intelligence theory. Now, the teacher can manage heterogeneous groups of students or a multi-level classroom by understanding their preferred ways of learning. 
the teacher can draw on the multiple intelligence theory to understand the different ways that students learn and demonstrate proficiency and group the students accordingly now what is this multiple intelligence theory howard gardner gave this theory of multiple intelligence and he said that students or children or adults learn in different ways they have different kinds of intelligences let's look at these different kind of intelligences separately linguistic intelligence is the intelligence which is reflected in the ability to use language effectively to express or communicate through written or spoken word now people with good linguistic intelligence are generally poets writers orators and comedians they are very good at song writing writing debates speeches and they are good orators logical mathematical intelligence is basically the ability to recognize relationships and patterns to think logically calculate numbers solve problems scientifically and systematically and generally it is found in mathematicians economists lawyers and scientists and these people are generally good at analyzing data asking log logical questions playing uh, st strategy games like chess and so on and so forth the third type of intelligence is the visual spatial intelligence now these people generally tend to think in images they orient oneself spatially graphically represent visual and spatial ideas and they are very good artists decorators architects pilots surveyors and so on and so forth the fourth type of intelligence is bodily kinesthetic intelligence and this type of intelligence is reflected in the ability to use one's own body skillfully and generally it is found amongst dancers actors athletes and sculptors the next uh, intelligence is the musical intelligence and this intelligence is reflected in the ability to appreciate a variety of musical forms use music as a vehicle of expression understand rhythm melody and pitch and generally singers musicians and composers have high scores on musical intelligence the next form of intelligence that harvard gardner gave was interpersonal or social intelligence now when we say interpersonal intelligence it is reflected in the ability to listen effectively and respond to others to work in groups to understand their feelings and generally sales people politicians religious leaders talk show hosts are found to be very good in interpersonal or social intelligence the next intelligence that harvard gardner has talked about is the intrapersonal intelligence now this ability is reflected in knowing your yourself knowing your strengths your motivations goals and feelings and this is generally reflected in people who are entrepreneurs therapists philosophers and so on and so forth now the last type of intelligence that harvard gardner has talked about is naturalistic intelligence in this intelligence people have the ability to identify and classify the components that make up the environment and you will find that botanists zoologists farmers they are very good and they have good scores on naturalistic intelligence so how can i use multiple intelligence in my heterogeneous or a multi level classroom well as a teacher i can use the concept of multiple intelligence by planning different kinds of activities activities which cater to the visuals uh, uh, aspect of the multiple intelligence which caters to the musical aspect of the multiple intelligence which involves a lot of kinesthetics going outdoors therefore when i use these different kinds of intelligences i am catering to the different intelligence or the different uh, levels of intelligence that are found in my classroom in a multi level setup or a heterogeneous group today's discussion was about multi level classrooms or managing heterogeneous groups in my classroom it is very important for the teacher to observe what each learner can do in order to plan for her learning and teaching in the classroom she needs to individually assess each student's needs and she needs to identify them before imparting the teaching learning in the classroom she needs to provide a variety of learning tasks representing the multiple intelligences 
and allowing for student choice a teacher also needs to plan open ended tasks that can offer different developmentally and culturally appropriate challenges for a range of students it is very important that the teacher allows flexibility with flexible timelines in a multi level setup all children irrespective of their level of learning should be allowed learning at their own pace therefore if there are slow learners in the classroom they should be encouraged to do well but they should be given extra time while the advanced learners can finish their activities and the teacher needs to plan more activities for them therefore time needs to be effectively managed for each level of the students allowing students liking and voluntary participation in the group is also very important aspect of managing a multi level situation students choice remaining in a group allowed but no grouping imposed on them is also a very important aspect of managing a multi level or a heterogeneous group heterogeneous grouping is also found suitable to facilitate individual pace of learning in a multi level classroom therefore the teacher needs to use heterogeneous grouping as a strategy in her classroom it is suitable for managing multi level situation both in mono grade and multi grade situations teachers handling the multi level situation should have adequate preparation for this adv in advance therefore preparing for the uh, heterogeneous group in a multi level situation is an important aspect the other important aspects that we discussed in the session are selecting materials and their appropriate use planning a variety of activities for each level ensuring involvement of all students in these activities some learning activities need to be planned to be applied to a higher achievers medium achievers and slow achieving students so if the teacher keeps in mind all these aspects she will be effectively able to manage her multi level situation in a, or a heterogeneous group in her classroom lessons need to be planned that every child will get involved in and they are uh, each child is involved in some learning activity or the other objectives for the heterogeneous groups need to be different there should be there should be opportunities for children to learn from each other therefore pair learning needs to be allowed in order to facilitate individual learning amongst the students therefore we can conclude that if we plan to profit from a heterogeneous group in a multi level situation we need to believe that diversity is not a drawback in fact it is a good thing in the classroom it is also important for the teacher to create an opportunity for every student in the class to participate we as teachers need to think of activities in terms of the appropriate challenge for each level group and to build an atmosphere of support collaboration respect and learner autonomy all these aspects are very important and vital if a mixed level classroom has to work effectively so viewers we conclude our this session and we hope to see you in our next session thank you very much